Welcome to the Bronze Gallery of Fashion Museum. So let us take a very quick tour around the museum and see a few of our masterpieces that's on display in the Bronze Sculpture Gallery. So first, uh, let's see the sculpture of Bharat, which is an amazing piece of art which is on display at the National Museum. This is a sculpture of Bharat, which dates back to 14th century CE and is from Vijayanagar Kingdom. Here you can see Bharat standing on a double lotus pedestal and this sculpture was used for ceremonial purposes because you can also see uh, four loops around the pedestal and Bharat has his hands raised above. Well, while Ram, Sita and Lakshman had taken one vase, Bharat visits them in the jungle in order to bring Ram back to Ayodhya. Clearly, Ram refuses to do so. But while returning from the jungle, Bharat makes it a point that he brings along his brother's wooden chappal or wooden sandals with him to Ayodhya, which he does. And while he returns to Ayodhya, he places the sandals, which you see on top of his head, on the throne in Ayodhya. And this was also a way to symbolize that Ram is still the king even if he is in Vanvas and Bharat is just a regent of the kingdom. Well, now we'll move to our next object and we'll be visiting uh, the Himalayan kingdom and to be more precise, we'll be uh, visiting the collection from Nepal and see one of the masterpieces which is on display in the gallery. So this is the bronze sculpture of uh, Indra which is on display here. Uh, it is from Nepal and dates back to 15th century CE. In the Buddhist mythology, Indra holds a very important place and it is an important figure in the episode of Buddha's birth. He is credited with many powers and one of his most important power being the med medicinal power and Indra is celebrated as an independent deity in the kingdom of Nepal. So let's visit our third masterpiece. This is the third masterpiece uh, from our bronze gallery collection and the object that you're looking at is a votive stupa which is from the Pal period and it dates back to the 9th century CE. It was excavated in Nalanda, Bihar. Well, there are many reasons for um, making it as one of our masterpieces and one of the reasons being the fact that uh, it is perhaps the most elaborately presented metal votive stupa known from India so far. And if you look at the square base, the square base has four steps in all the four cardinal directions. So if you look at this is the first step, the second one, the third step and the one at the back as well. And now let's look at the parasol. The eight rings of parasol could also represent the eightfold path advocated by Buddha himself and uh, the eighth Vimukha or the states of emancipation. So this is a third masterpiece. Now let's walk towards our fourth masterpiece which is also displayed in the bronze gallery and it is the sculpture of Buddha from the Fofna hold from Madhya Pradesh. So if you look at the sculpture this is a stunning piece of art which is uh, from the Gupta Wakataka period and dates back to 5th to 6th century CE. Uh, this is by far the biggest and the most expressive image of Buddha from the Fofnar Hoard, which is uh, in the National Museum collection. Let's look at it very closely. The parasol of this sculpture displays two maladhars. So if you can just look at that, there are two maladhars where you see and uh, they're holding floral wreath around Buddha's head. And there is also an inscription which is here on the pedestal which reads Daya Dharmoyam Nagachari Veera which if I translate it, it means a gift of Nagachari Veera. 
Now let's look at our last masterpiece which I'm sure every one of us would love to have a look at it especially when the museum is closed for public. So this is the last sculpture that I'll be showing you from our bronze gallery collection and this stunning sculpture of Nataraj is from the Chola period and it dates back to the 12th century CE and is from Tamil Nadu and as most of us would know the fact that Nataraj is the lord of dance and he is regarded as the most outstanding expression of divine rhythm and harmony in our Indian art. Here you can see uh, Shiva presenting himself in a dancing avatar where his uh, right leg is placed on a dwarf who is considered as the demon of ignorance. His left leg and front hand are lifted in graceful gesture across the body to the right and his left hand pointing towards the left foot. His front right hand which you can see right here is in Abhaya Mudra or uh, the gesture of protection. On his back hand if you can see it clearly the right holds the Damru and the left holds fire. So let me just take you closer. So this is the hand holding Damru and the other hand holding fire. And on the right swirl is a uh, river goddess Ganga in Anjali Mudra. So let me just show you. There you see Ganga in Anjali Mudra which this mudra is very important right now because you are not supposed to shake hands but do namaste so this is the anjali mudra here you see uh, ganga doing the anjali mudra and uh, behind the head is a makara mukha from whose mouth emerges um, a circular arch with an outer band of flame the nataraj image basically signifies the cosmos hence the omnipresence of Lord Shiva so this is the last object that I wanted to show you from our gallery but before I wind up let's take a quick round around the gallery and again this is an interesting object in our collection uh, here you can see the scene where Krishna is holding uh, or trying to tame the deadly five-headed serpent. And this section in the gallery represents the goddesses or uh, goddesses or Devi images that we have in our collection. This is again in a very beautiful representation of Ardhanarishwar. This is from the Vijayanagar Kingdom, 15th century CE. I hope we could give you a very quick tour around our uh, masterpieces from our bronze gallery collection. Since the museum is closed, uh, so we thought we'll take you around our select masterpieces. Uh, I'll be back with uh, another set of masterpieces from the bronze gallery collection as well as other galleries. Till then, stay safe and stay home.